Hi, today my talk will be on aortic stenosis from a media article released by Cardiovascular News on the 25th of January 2017. They've briefly touched on recent success in using traditional surgical methods to treat aortic stenosis, as opposed to the more recent TAVI, or transcatheter aortic valve implantation. This was most commonly used in elderly patients who typically would be more suitable for that treatment due to a risk of infection from open heart surgery. But what distinguishes the two methods' usefulness in treating different patients? This is, hope, this is my hope, by the end of this presentation, that you'll understand this. To start, what does aortic stenosis affect? Well, aortic stenosis affects the heart, and as we know, the heart is a four-chambered muscle. Uh, it acts as the pump that supplies the rest of the body with blood, which is the body's primary transport system. Arteries move oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body, with the exception of the pulmonary artery, and veins move deoxygenated blood carrying CO2 back to the heart, with the exception of the pulmonary vein that carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. Now it's the contraction of these muscles surrounding these chambers that expels blood further along the circulatory system and supplies the peripheries with essential nutrients, including but not limited to gases, minerals, proteins, and hormones. And as you can see up here, I've got a small diagram of the heart and what I'll draw your attention to is just the left ventricle here. The valve that aortic stenosis affects is this one, leading from the left ventricle up here along into the aorta. Aortic stenosis is one of the primary valve diseases that affects the human heart, and is the narrowing of the aortic valve that leads from the left ventricle to the aorta. This narrowing of the valve is most often caused either by the buildup of scarring and calcification of and around the valve, or a malformation of the tricuspid valve, where two flaps are fused together, resulting in a bicuspid valve that further reduces blood flow. This blockage puts additional strain on the heart muscle, and over time leads to muscle swelling and fatigue, and eventually results in heart failure. And up on this diagram, we've got two sets of valves. We've got the normal aortic valve, where as you can see here, it's nice and open, there's no blockages and you'll have full flow. And here in the closed one, it's completely closed and you won't have the backflow bleeding from the left ventricle to the aorta. However, in the valve stenosis, we've got calcification or scarring along here, which means it's not completely open, so the heart's already having to work harder to push blood out into the aorta. And then again, in the closed position, it's not entirely closed because the valves can't release back into their normal position. And that means you'll have backflow into the heart and the ventricle's already going to have blood sitting in it. So it's going to have less of a push and the heart's going to have to work harder to expel it out into the aorta again. A more recent solution to this disease is the use of transcatheter aortic heart valve implantation, a method replacing the more commonly used surgical aortic heart valve replacement. This technique is advantageous as it involves repairing the existing heart valve without having to perform open heart surgery, a high risk procedure that many patients such as the elderly and the immunosuppressed are not suitable candidates for. The transcatheter heart valve implantation can involve any one of the following five methods of implantation. These include the transfemoral, the transapical, the subclavian, the direct aortic, and the transcapal. The femoral artery is the preferred method of getting it in, where the catheter is inserted in the upper leg and follows the femoral artery back to the heart, where a small balloon-like attachment is inflated and mechanically widens the valve, replacing the existing valve, valve structure with an artificial design. Now from this diagram here you can see this is the aortic valve just here and where normally the flaps would be flush across they've now been pushed up by the catheterized valve replacement and inside this bubble is the mechanical valve that acts as the replacement so it acts exactly like normal only it takes the place of in the catheter the regular aortic valve. Now it's the overall results of this procedure that reduce, reduce the further risk and complications post-operation due to reducing the need for highly invasive and extensive open heart surgery. They cause ex ex excess strain on the immune system, often leading to fatal cases in those poorly equipped to withstand and recover. Uh, it also improves recovery times, with the only withstanding flaw being that there is the chance that the valve doesn't attach and exist symbiotically with the host, which requires further in intervention. Overall, transcatheter aortic heart valve implantation is widely regarded, as well in my opinion, as the far superior method to traditional heart surgery. 
are treating ALX splenosis, as the reduced risk ensures the best chance for survival and recovery, particularly for the immunosuppressed and the elderly.